welcome to the Starsology Astrology Podcast. I'm your host, Alison Price. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you the four cornerstones of chart interpretation. So chart reading is a huge subject and there are many ways to skin this cat. So today, let's zoom in for a high level look at what you need to know and what is important for anyone who wants to read charts. So first of all, let's have a look at what is a cornerstone. It's one of those things that kind of holds up buildings. So if you build a a building or even a pyramid, for example, you would put four cornerstones in to start with to lay out exactly where the footprint of the building is going to be, and you get these level. And from these cornerstones, you can build a massive pyramid or your house or whatever it is that you're going for. So the idea is that cornerstones are really foundations and that things can be built upon. And in astrology, there are four cornerstones. So the first uh, cornerstone is going to be signs. And um, the signs of the zodiac are really the gateway to chart reading because everybody knows their sun sign. And as an astrologer, you need to understand the signs. And the one way to do this is with keywords. So with sign keywords, there are a few keywords for each sign. And a keyword cannot be generic, such as happy, which could apply to many of the signs. So it has to directly relate to the sign and to no other sign. So to find these specific sign keywords is really the key here. Um, some example sign keywords would be, say, for the fire signs, we would say inspirational, hot, fiery, active and outgoing. And those keywords can apply to all three of the fire signs. However, if we zoom in a little bit and say, well, what about Aries? So some keywords here would be competitive, aggressive, dynamic, and red. For Leo, we would have creative, honest, extravagant, and yellow. And for Sagittarius, adventurous, cosmopolitan, philosophical, and blue. So these keywords that are sign-specific cannot be used for other signs. And this is how you need to zoom in on these keywords. Now, I'm a big fan of using an astrology journal, and um, for me, it's just an A5 book where you start making notes about the astrology you're learning. And um, if you, if this is how you're working, you would get your astrology journal out and turn it to um, a double spread pages and write signs on it. And over the next 12 pages, you're going to write each sign name at the top of each page. And here you can put in your five keywords that you've decided are important for the sign. You can fill in more information later about the signs. This is not a book that you start at the beginning and work to the end. You actually lay it out in your sections. And typically you would start with your cornerstone topics, which is what we're talking about now. So the ideal thing would be to to choose five keywords for each sign and learn them first. You want to pay attention to things like polarity, element and mode, but don't worry too much about these yet. We'll come there fine tuning uh, sign components. And first of all, you want to learn the signs that you have tenants in or in which there are planets in your chart in these signs. So, for instance, if you've got the sun in Libra, then obviously you're going to learn that sign. And then you turn your attention to your moon sign and learn those signs keywords and then go on for all the other planets. So in the end, you're going to start focusing on the signs which you have planets in, which you are resonating with in your life, and start to understand those signs to start with. Because there's a lot to learn in the beginning. Now, your second cornerstone is the planets. Um, So after you've learned some sign stuff, you can start moving on to the planets. And again, you're going to start with the sun, the moon, and then work your way out. And typically here, you want to have one page in your journal for each planet, and you can put in there at least five planet-specific keywords that are only keywords for that planet, not generic. Now, at this point, you can certainly use your astrology books of references, and I'm sure each of you have some astrology books on your shelf. Maybe some of you've got lots. Maybe some of you have just got one or two. And if you're thinking of which books to get, the first book I recommend um, new astrologers get is the Uh, The Contemporary Astrologer's Handbook by Sue Tompkins. This is quite a modern book. It's written recently and it's solid, solid astrology. And this is one of the best books that you can buy first. And you can pull some keywords from there too. And of course, if you have other books, you certainly want to reach into those and get some keywords for your signs and planets. The third cornerstone in astrology reading is the houses. So there are 12 houses. Each house represents a different area of life. And interestingly, the houses can also contain people in your life. So you want to pay attention to that. So you're going to start learning the houses 
in the chart where you have planets. So if you've got planets in your eighth house, learn that first. And if you've got planets in your second house, learn that. If you have vacant houses with no planets, you can learn those later. So again, you want to find yourself five keywords for each house and put them on your page in your journal. So we're starting now, we've, we've done the signs, we've done the planets, and now we've got onto the houses and you would have each, you would have 12 open double page spreads for each house and where you can add your keywords. And then our fourth and final keystone is actually the aspect. So you're going to be uh, learning the aspects. That is the fourth thing you're going to want to know about. You're going to need to know these things for reading charts. And um, I suggest you go with the Ptolemaic aspects first. These are the five major aspects. It's the conjunction, opposition, trans, square and sextile. Learn those first. Once you've mastered the big five aspects, when you've got keywords and a spread in your journal for those, you can move on to the minor aspects, of which there are four, the semi-sextile, the quincunx, the semi-square, and the sesquiquadrate. Learn those aspects next. Um, you can then move on to aspects of declination, uh, the parallel and the contraparallel. Uh, learn about those, get those keywords. And finally, you can move on to the lesser used aspects, such as the quintile and the, and the five pattern aspects and the, the biquintile and so on, or the septile and the biceptile and the triceptile, the novile and the decile, and any other obscure aspect or lesser used aspect that takes your fancy. So learning these uh, four cornerstones of astrology, it is a process. You're not going to know it all the first time you go over it. You're going to read a few books, watch a few videos, listen to a few podcasts and get some ideas. The idea being that it is a process of learning astrology. And when you put in the time and you're writing things down, working on your journal, you actually, it's a better way to learn things. You can always add to this later. So once you've got your journal sorted out and you've got your four cornerstones, focus on those first. If you're a new astrologer, and by this I mean someone who's been doing astrology for less than a year, definitely focus on the four cornerstones. Learn the signs, planets, houses and aspects as best you can before you start moving on to more complicated uh, subjects. So the idea is that as you read more and more charts, you can develop your interpretation style further and make notes in your journal about how you are perceiving these actual placements and the sort of astrology that you want to produce as well. So please do let me know if you've got any questions about this topic and you can send all your questions or thoughts to starsology at gmail.com and we'll get to them in a later podcast. So I hope these ideas will give you something to think about this week. Uh, something to chew on if you're a relatively new astrologer. These four cornerstones will help you get going with learning this wonderful craft of astrology. If you need more astrological inspiration, you can join our newsletter. There is a link below this podcast. So thank you for being here and spending a part of your day with me. This is Alison saying thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for getting this far through the episode. I just want to take a moment to tell you about the two main options of my astrology services. So the first one is coaching. If you are an aspiring astrologer, and by that I mean someone who's perhaps a hobbyist astrologer or someone who's learning astrology or a student, or you've got a few books and you've been doing it for a while, but perhaps you need a little bit of help to bring it all together, then maybe getting some astrological coaching from me would be the answer for you. The astrology coaching I offer is a one hour session on Zoom and it's tailored to answer your particular questions. For example, if you have issues with natal chart readings, we can go there. Or if you're having problems working with your forecasting, we can go there. Or even basic astrology stuff, or even getting yourself organized for your astrology business. The idea is that astrological coaching will answer your particular questions. It's tailored specifically to you and where you are in your astrological journey. And I'm happy to help you out with some guidance about how you can get going, what to focus on and what to dismiss. So that would be the astrological coaching for people trying to learn astrology. The second astrological service I offer is consultations. So this is for someone who perhaps doesn't know anything about astrology, but they just want to have their chart read or get their chart done call it what you will. So once more, this is a one hour consultation over Zoom. I will interpret your chart, tell you about the main features, 
tell you about where the energy is flowing and all the rest of what is entailed in a thorough natal chart interpretation. I can also add in some forecasting in there too, bearing in mind we only have one hour. So just in summary, I've got coaching for people who want to learn astrology and I've got uh, consultations for those who want to get an astrology reading done. I'm Alison Price from Starsology.com. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.